Hey everyone, Matthew back at the Hub. I'm with Lindsay, student extraordinaire. Um, we're going to dive into some more things that are more about her yoga practice. If you want to know more about the backstory of the, the car accident that Lindsay was in, check out our YouTube channel and you can hear a lot more detail about what's happening. But today we're going to just focus on her yoga practice because what's been very interesting for me as a, as a teacher um, is, is what a developed yoga practice that Lindsay came with before we started working together. But before we go on, I, uh, last time we were together about two months ago, mm -hmm. and you had just gotten fitted with a new set of prosthetics, and since then you've had two more. Two more, and this will be the third. Third mm -hmm. set coming in a little bit of time, which I think is actually really important. I mean, when it comes to your, your body and the things that you're going to be living with 24-7 or a big part of your day, this is a good lesson. Get it right. Like this is, and uh, so you want to maybe go into prosthetic stuff, and that's awesome. So say a little bit about what you, how that evolution happened in the last couple months. Sure. Um, so getting fit for a new pro pair of prosthetics, it's a little bit of a crapshoot every time. You kind of don't know how a particular limb is going to fit. You always hope, at least I always hope, that it's going to be great the first time. Though I, that's not usually what happens. Uh, so. The last couple of sets that I was in, I was having um, trouble with my, more trouble with my knees, um, more trouble with the tibia and the fibula distally on both legs. Um, and then for whatever reason, one of the prosthetics was a little bit short and it felt like it wasn't coming from the foot. It was like the actual length of the prosthetic socket was a little bit short. And that can happen in fabrication when something gets raised a little bit too much and that can be mean that they take um, the wire rasp and just run over the plaster model a little bit too much and it so it shortens, it raises it. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyways, I was feeling this in my body. So how do you feel that? Does that come through as pain or it like can, how, or irritation or what is the? Um, it can come through as pain. And that's happened a few different times in my life where one particular socket was, was raised a little bit too much. And it, sh it can present itself a little bit differently. Um, just, you can just tell it, it's, it's just not right. I just it's have that feeling that it's, it's not right. And for me, it's like when I'm wearing a prosthetic, it's like when I step into it, I, I just know the different sensations. Like, I don't know, it's, it's almost tricky to describe because there's a certain sensation that I'm seeking and that I know should kind of should be there. Right. And so when I don't have that, I'm wondering why. why. I'm like, why is that? It's what like am, a what's puzzle. missing? Yes, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, it's like a puzzle. So, it took a little while to to seek and to find that that was what was happening. Um, and it, I guess, the end um, it manifests in my knees. I'm like, yep. my knees should not be hurting like this. My knees yep. knees have not hurt like this in. I don't know, six or seven years. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I know I have a little arthritis in my knees, but it's not been so bad. Right. And so I just knew there was something that was off. So anyways, I pushed to have another um, set of test sockets made and, and those were okay. But anyways, we've... Yeah, I don't think this is also just about prosthetics either. I think that, that like I can tell like if I've got too much hair on one axle, if the wheel's not going quite right, mm -hmm. all these things and what's funny and, and with prosthetics, it'd be even more intense, is that you usually don't start barking about it or change it until it actually hurts. Mm -hmm. So one of the goals is to try to have as much awareness going into it and trying yes. to get it right, right? Exactly. And you had said about these couple, so the, 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 you had two sets since then, um, mm -hmm. and one of them, you said, I was interested in what we just talked about off camera, is that one of them is now better for standing poses because it's more rigid. Can you talk a little bit yeah. about, about what that? So um, I was actually, so I was referring to my prosthetic feet. So now I have feet that have a microprocessor in them. Actually, both feet have a microprocessor in them. And um, so it's, it's not just about the feet. I mean, I definitely have to have a good prosthetic fit. Like that's almost like the foundation, really. If I don't mm. have a good prosthetic fit, then my bones hurt and then... It's a trickle effect. Um, uh, but in addition to that, I'm realizing that different prosthetic feet, I guess it's like I don't know, the difference between trying to practice yoga in a set of high heels versus, you know, your bare feet or a tennis shoe or something like that, right? right. It's going to change. 
And I, I didn't really realize this until I'd taken a trip to California and we were doing a lot of standing poses. And I was realizing that coming in and out of them and holding standing poses, it was easier. And I wondered why. Like, that was something that came up. I'm like, wow, it's been a long time since I have been able to practice at this level. And I was curious about that. And then I guess I've just decided that I think it's the feet. And I think that these feet aren't as dynamic when the motor is turned off, um, which is great for a standing practice. I can't seem to remember to charge them on a regular so basis. So you have more flexible, dynamic feet if you're walking in rough terrain? Yeah, so or my other set of prosthetic feet were very dynamic, and they allowed me to traverse rocks and you know, hike and climb um, I guess in some ways with a little bit more ease, they're a lighter weight foot. Mm. Um, they're kind of a multi-axle foot. Um, they're going to absorb some of that shock. And it's not that these don't, um, but these just move differently and respond to movement yeah. differently. I so. wonder if it's a difference between for someone who's, you know, doesn't have our situation, doing standing poses and if you're on carpet or not. Sure. If you're on yep. carpet, standing poses and balancing poses kind of suck. So I'm imagining... Mm -hmm that you've got that little extra kind of thing yep. that then's going through the whole body. Exactly. And so it's just so interesting that it like more dynamic, more responsive isn't always the best. I mean, right. you wouldn't want our bones to be too responsive. They have to have their solidity too, mm -hmm. right? So something like that must be going yeah. on in your standing poses. So that's curious. So you kind of found, do you ever think about, do you just then practice while turning the microprocessor off? I, I do practice with it off, which is good because I don't seem to remember to charge them anyways. Yeah. Um, but I had tried to practice with them on, and what I was finding is that the feet don't respond fast enough. So if I'm, let's say, like in downward dog, and then I want to come into lunge or do like a sun salutation, when I swing and then move the foot forward, it's in a different, it's somewhere else. <laughs> and it's not good because it's not where I need it to be. And so it makes me very unstable. Okay. Um, so I've just decided that I need to practice with them off. I mean, I, I could turn them on for like is an isolated pose if I wanted to do that. Like, you know, I suppose like for triangle, it would make um, the use of like using a wedge a, probably a little bit more friendly because the, I have plantar flexion. Right. Um, you know, I just, I haven't messed around with that. I yeah, haven't yeah, worked with that's, it too but much. What, what I like so much about what you're doing is what any yoga student should do is you have to just experiment and try and try this and try that. And that's the spirit of practice, mm -hmm. right? That's much more the spirit of practice. Another thing we had talked about was that you, in the last few days or weeks, have been practicing both with and without your prosthetics. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about the sure. difference of that? Um, I, I've, I've come to this realization that I feel like practicing with my legs on, in some ways, I feel a little bit more whole. And the reason I say that is because I was, I, last night I was, um, practicing Upavishta Konasana. Legs and, wide, sitting on the floor. Yeah, and I just, I really wanted to do that, and I really wanted to, it, like, integrate in a little bit of twisting, but what I was finding is that the energy just felt stuck, and I just kind of, I was repeating the same few movements over and over and over, and I just, I just didn't feel grounded, the energy felt stuck, and I couldn't quite figure out why, and then I was realizing, okay, I didn't have like the blankets that I would like normally put underneath my limbs when my legs are off. Um, I didn't have those available. And um, anyways, it's, it's been kind of fun to yeah, um, experiment with that. Um, but I'm there, curious about it though, too. Are there other poses where you know you'd rather practice with or without having your legs on? Like, um, so what's on? interesting is that um, like Sukhasana, like, Pretzel Simple legs. cross legs. So, um, in some ways, I really like having my legs off. And, and the reason being is I feel like I can, I can um, move my pelvis a little bit better. Like if I'm when sitting up. Off. When they're off. I feel like, you know, my thigh bone, my thighs drop and I can sit, I can sit with a taller spine, right, when they're, when they're off. I mean, I'm up high right now in a chair, um, but if I'm on the floor, it's, it's harder to obtain with my legs on because my legs are kind of stopped inside the prosthetic. And, and even it's making you, because the energy is kind of stopping, yeah, I, and, and then yeah. it kind of holds you in your abdomen mm -hmm, and, and freezes grip. the pose a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, but in the, however, I also like to have them on because I have 
Um, there's like the sensation of my hips that I don't quite get with my legs off that I get with them on. And so, you, can you, just like, curious. yeah, like that's a very curious thing, which I think is fascinating. What, what, um, what can't you get without your legs on? Um, it's more, I know it's more it's of a, a sensation. It's a sensation. No, I, yeah. mm. We could, we could, mm -hmm. we'll have no, to we're go right through it this, in real time. We're right on that cusp, <laughs> yeah, on that cusp of where language yeah. fails. Um, so I think it's, it's, uh, it's a neat exploration to practice with my legs on and with them off. And I, um, I know that sometimes, you know, I can kind of think about like what's not working, but I, I have been trying to shift it to like what is working because I think that yeah. we can all get in that like negative hamster wheel and yeah. like, kind of spiral out of control a little bit. So I remember uh, one time in my yoga practice, I would always ask my teacher, Joe, like, well, is it this way or that way? And she'd always, for, for years, she'd be quiet and say, well, it's both. Whenever you're asking an either or question, the answer is both mm -hmm. because a, a yoga practice has to include both what you do well and your mistakes, mm -hmm. and what isn't quite working, and what does work, because otherwise your mind will never be able to recognize the differences. Yeah. And so it sounds like for a balanced practice, you need to practice both with and without, mm -hmm. and figure out the differences. I'm just curious if there's certain poses that are clearly better, like I'm, I'm sure you don't practice standing, but do you have a standing pose practice without your prosthetics at all? Not really, I mean, mm -hmm. what I mean, so I can say I don't regularly. I have um, chosen to or tried to when I've had like significant challenges with my the fit of my legs or like five years five, well, six years ago I had a revision surgery so I wasn't in a prosthetic for a while. Um, so I would try to figure out like how I can have the same sensation um, mm -hmm. like doing like a triangle pose and right. you know things like that like. Um, using like chairs and blocks to try to build up so that I am upright. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there's lots of ways to turn a pose on its side or to be upside down or on your back. Um, I haven't really worked with inversions, I guess with my legs um, off, mm -hmm. you know, like a true inversion. Mm -hmm. I mean that, because mm -hmm. it seems a little scary to, because no, totally. I'm used I to like, you know, putting my foot, yeah. uh, my foot down, right? Yeah, to yeah. come like out of like headstand. For, like, for so example. I'm just like curious, like, like, not, I know the answer is both, so I'm asking you for a false sure. answer. But like <laughs> back bends, do you have a preference with or without your prosthetics on? I I've only practiced with my prosthetics. With I'm back trying bends. to I'm trying to think of an. Mm, I have done some stuff on the floor that would be considered so, a backward. Ex yeah, extension. I was just wondering. So you're thinking True. about your back bending or back extension, backward extensions as. As full-on poses, so right, yeah. Okay, so I was. that's so I had that's to pause a, a second. <laughs> that's a big catch, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, you don't always have to just think of them in terms of certain poses that are yes, typical. Yes, exactly. Um, so mostly with that. How about like twists? I like doing twists. Um, I will do them with and without my legs. That is actually mm -hmm. something that I find myself doing. Um, I enjoy having time without my legs on. I mean, I mm -hmm. enjoy being able to be upright and, and to ambulate well, you know, upright. Uh, sometimes it's just convenient not to, like, take the time to, like, throw my legs back on for, for some and reason. And can you walk so, around without your prosthetics on? Or, yeah, I do. Yeah, I use okay. knee pads to knee get pads. around the house. And so, you know, I'll, I'll do, like, recline twists or I'll do seated twists um, mm -hmm. without my legs on. On a regular basis, um, I will do that. Um, but it's, it is different. The energy is different. And seat forward bends, which way, with or without? I mostly do them with. with. And, I mean, I can makes do sense, some Makes sense, though. I don't, I don't know them. why right now, but it makes sense to me that it'd be with. There is, um, I think it's more, for me, it's more like this, the energetic feel of being able to press your heels, that if I don't have my limbs, you know, elevated a little bit on a blanket, then a lot of, like, a lot of the energy gets stuck in my low back and in my pelvis. Which is one and of the places so, you say you get, you can overdo your low back, mm -hmm. especially in back bends, right? Yeah. And you do it, you, you overdo your low back less when you have your legs on. Yeah, something, I think a part of it's having that counterbalance, the weight mm -hmm. um, so of the prosthetics. you not having to grip to hold. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you're having a wider base. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
How about, so you said seated, you kind of like doing it with, with and without. Ford bends with or without. Mm -hmm. um, um, how, and twists, both? Both, yeah. Both. It just kind of depends. I mean, um, How about I don't, restorative, with or without? You know, in class, in, like in, in terms of a class, well, it depends on the poses. And so, like, if I'm in a class, I will, it'll vary, and, and this is why. I just base it on, like, how my prosthetics are fitting and how, how comfortable it feels. Mm -hmm. If I really feel like I can't get it, like, stay in a restorative pose with my legs on, they're coming off. Like, I want to be, I want to enjoy the practice. Um, though some, sometimes just having them on feels really good, so I think, it, it, for me, it depends on the pose. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. And so yeah. I know you had just taken a 10-day trip back to California and getting back to your teacher. I did. Which is, it's like magic. It's always good to be around your home mm -hmm. student, home teacher. How was that? Was anything different because of anything new we've been working on? Or was it the same? Or was it, how was that? Did it? Gosh, in some ways, it was kind of a whirlwind getting there. I had a, I had a really hard time trusting to leave because we, you know, we have a baby. baby yeah. So, yeah. gosh, you know, <laughs> it was, I, I don't know so how you, many times. So you were there without your I did. Youngest. I went without her. Um, wow. Our son flew to California ahead of me, and then and he visited friends. And I don't know how many times I, I canceled and rebooked this trip. <laughs> Because I was having a really hard time trusting to go. And, um, so anyways, then I guess, I guess what really like, drove me to go was I really wanted it for me. I really, like, I just really wanted to go. And, mm -hmm. and I felt like I really also needed to, ha this was like a time to grow in terms of trust. But it was still hard. I still cried all the way to the airport. Right. And I still was like, do I get on this plane? Because I could really, I could turn around right now. Like, I don't have to get on this plane. And so it wasn't until, like, I got on the plane, the doors were shut, you know. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm doing this, you, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was wonderful to be there. My, um, my practice, I, I, ha I haven't regularly been doing a lot of standing um, practice. And so that was a fun challenge. And um, it also told me a lot about like different places that I want to work. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting to discover how these prosthetic feet respond because the last time um, that I had practiced at home and was here, I was in my old feet. Like I just got these, um, it, these the feet I got at the end of July. So I had mm -hmm. only really been in them a couple of weeks before I decided to travel. So it was interesting to travel with different feet that I really hadn't um, had a lot of time to experiment with and practice with and just kind of like dive into like going to classes two or three times a day and, and just seeing, seeing how that was. So I went with an open mind. Mm -hmm. I went with just show up every day and just, just see what was going to unfold. And I love that. It was great. A couple, well, the cl couple questions to close. Like, so when you practice and, and the history of your practice, has it been guided by more like trying to get to and achieve poses or more sensation based it's been both in the beginning i think it was more about you know discovering how to how to do different poses mm -hmm. and what that looked like as an amputee and and trying not to compare that to being able to do even though i didn't have like a yoga practice before i was an amputee but i could do different shapes right mm -hmm. for you know like in, in gymnastics or just in in life you know i could do different shapes and um, yeah, not trying to compare my body now to what it was then. Um, and then as I moved through my yoga practice, it became more about sensation. And that's something that I feel like I'm, I'm pretty keenly aware of because I'm, I wear prosthetics. Um, that there's always a sensation that's hard to articulate to other people. Totally. And so... I've, I've wanted to like, try to figure out ways to articulate like, what I'm feeling in my prosthetic because it's been an ongoing challenge to articulate and to get like, a prosthetic that I feel like fits really well. Right. And so that's kind of developed. It's kind of been hand in hand in my practice. And so then it became more about what I'm sensing and what I'm feeling. And so that was, it's been an interesting uh, shift. Um, 
But there are some times where it is about, I really want to work on a certain pose, but it is, it's, it's both physical and sensation, right. you know? And you have certain poses that you, I know you like back bends a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and twists. And twists. And, and inversions, just, just kind of depending on which yeah. ones. So you basically like everything. Yeah. It just depends on the day, like everybody, yeah. right? I've learned to love restorative yoga over the years. I did it in the beginning. Well, I, I, I think stand that's almost it. an age thing. Yes. Like when you when you're a kid, you start wearing out. Yeah. Anything to nourish feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so so we're going to close up this part of the conversation now. We're going to start doing more yoga poses in the next in the next session. Um, and is I really think that that what's so important too is like Final question, was there a point, I'm not talking like being in a class, was there a point, and you've developed a home practice within a year, which is extraordinary, right? Um, was there a point when you're doing yoga or a period of time where you all said, no, hey, no, I really belong and I can do this, like this is going to work? Did you have a moment like there are moments like that or a period of time or... You know, you because know, you've had really, a very quiet relationship yeah. between you and the universe mm -hmm. when you're trying to figure out, I know this from my own experience, when you're trying to figure out how to practice and you don't fit, you're not a, a you're a square peg trying to fit into a round mm -hmm. hole. Yeah. And you're in that place where all of a sudden you're like, was there, yeah. remember the process of that when you started to feel? Well, for like me, it was, I really, um, I feel like it was back when I discovered downtown yoga in Pleasanton, because I had tried out different places, and I just felt like I was not fitting in, and uh, it was very much about the physical body, and, and that was it. And so, you know, I walked by that studio for so many years, just assuming that it was just like everywhere else. And it wasn't until I walked through the doors that I realized, and I, I guess to kind of answer your, your question kind of in a long way, I didn't really realize how much I felt like like that was a home and that my I belong there and that everyone um, was open to you know discovering what it was like to have someone who was an amputee in their class and I didn't feel out of place or like I was like I don't know um, like a prized possession because I some people do make me feel like that sometimes and totally. I don't like that feeling yeah, me either uh, <laughs> like I'm not a puppet either uh, so I just felt very like, welcomed as a whole being in that particular studio and um, that's something that I look for and that's why I'm here because yeah, yeah. that's here yeah. too and yep. but it's hard to find oh it is hard to find. and I really encourage people it's adv advocacy and it's about you know, finding, you know, what lies in your heart and your being and, and finding that and being open to trying new places. I don't know. There's that saying, like, sometimes you have to kiss a lot of frogs. And that, is, I mean, that happens in the yoga practice, too. So I think that's really, finding that studio was really. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So we're going to close this one up and we're going to start doing more yoga. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Hey, I'm back. If you liked what you saw, there's more coming. To keep up with new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your notifications.